Well, here is Gagarin's launch on the left uh, atop a, a newer version of the R7. Uh, and uh, you can see the cutaway drawing at right. There is a, uh, an upper stage, a third stage uh, rocket that would uh, take over after the main uh, R7 vehicle ran out of fuel and was cast off. The third stage would fire and uh, take the spacecraft into orbit, at which point it would separate, leaving just the spherical crew module and that sort of double cone-shaped instrument and retro rocket module. Of course, there was a uh, cone-shaped uh, fairing, a protective uh, fairing that, that uh, covered the spacecraft at launch and was jettisoned once the vehicle had left the uh, atmosphere. Now, the one aspect, the, the, the Gagarin's flight was a great success uh, overall, but there was one um, pretty, uh, pretty uh, difficult and scary moment there that happened for Gagarin that we did not learn about in the West until many decades later. Um, Gagarin lined up his spacecraft as he was coming around to complete his, his single orbit, fired the retro rocket, and uh, at that point, the instrument module was supposed to separate. And uh, it did partially separate. It was still connected by a connective cable that was supposed to have been uh, jettisoned. But the instrument module and the crew module remained, the descent module, that spherical descent module, remained attached and actually began spinning at a rate of about 30 degrees per second and continued like that as they began to re-enter the atmosphere. Now, if they hadn't separated, Gagarin would probably have been killed because that would not have been a controlled way to re-enter the atmosphere. Finally, that cable burned through and the descent module was able to re-enter normally. And at uh, 23,000 feet, uh, the, the descent module's parachute came out and Gagarin uh, ejected from the spacecraft using an a, uh, ejection seat. That was standard procedure for the Vostok cosmonauts. They did not land with their ship, but they came down separately by parachute. And, um, of course, that was the successful conclusion. But again, we did not know about that crisis. Uh, the Soviets kept it secret, and we did not find out about it until many, many years later after the fall of the Soviet Union and more information became available. Well, on May 5, 1961, finally, Alan Shepard got his chance to go into space, uh, riding the uh, Mercury spacecraft and the Redstone rocket uh, to an altitude of about 115 miles. You can see uh, lower left a schematic diagram of the flight, a suborbital hop uh, that ended with splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean near Bermuda. And at the top, you can see a still from the motion picture frames that were taken of Shepard during the flight. I believe that image is Shepard looking out the window to make sure that his parachute had properly deployed as he came down for a splashdown. Of course, it did deploy. He splashed down safely. And here is Shepard being hoisted up to the recovery helicopter. Um, and you can see below him and slightly to the left of him, we're looking down on the Mercury capsule, which uh, is uh, floating uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. Shepard uh, comes home, is greeted with a hero's welcome. You can see him on the left there riding in uh, a parade with uh, Vice President Lyndon Johnson between Shepard and his wife Louise. And in the front seat, gr uh, grinning broadly, is uh, NASA Administrator James Webb, who was obviously very pleased that we had finally put a man in space. Uh, albeit not the first man in space, but at least we had gotten Mercury off the ground. And um, another person who was very pleased, as you see on the right there, is President John Kennedy, who is pinning a uh, NASA Distinguished Service Medal on Shepard's chest. And uh, Kennedy was extremely relieved and, uh, and um, very uplifted by the successful flight of Alan Shepard and also by the country's reaction to it. He saw an outpouring of pride and excitement, and Kennedy had been trying to think of a way to recover 
from these um, from these uh, very embarrassing Soviet firsts. First, the uh, the Sputnik launch in 1957. Of course, Kennedy was not president then, but then in the first months of his presidency, to see Yuri Gagarin become the first man in space and embarrass us again was an extra sting. And for Kennedy, um, also, it followed very closely the uh, very embarrassing incident called the Bay of Pigs disaster. Uh, so Kennedy was really looking for a way to have our own victory in the space race. And uh, on May 25th, 1961, just a few weeks after Shepard's flight, and as I say, buoyed by the uh, public reaction to Shepard's flight, he issued an absolutely extraordinary challenge to uh, Congress and to the country. He said, I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And at that moment, the space race became a moon race and the very beginning of a grand adventure that would be called Project Apollo. This is Andrew Chaikin. See you next week.